Hi all, T Stanley back again. Thanks for joining me. Uh, today's video is what I think will be the first in a series of videos looking at uh, well my Euro rack case and the modules contained within it, uh, particularly the surge uh, random source surge modules. Uh, the first one I'm gonna actually look at it will be the new terminal oscillator or the NTO and we're going to cover a little bit of the history I think and uh, just functionality obviously and yeah hopefully you can get some helpful info about the module if you're thinking about you know pulling the trigger on one or you already own one and would like you know more in-depth info so on. <clears throat> so we're just going to go over the parameters and the functions and uh, I'll try and explain as best I can uh, the ins and outs of this particularly awesome oscillator. And then following this we will look at a lot of the other uh, modules in the random source surge line. Because uh, I'm quite a fan, well, since they've been released to the market, it didn't take me long to, you know, f just, just decide that these were very good modules and I wanted to build a system based around them. So we'll go through them all over time. But, yeah, let's have a look at the NTO for now. So I'll just... Uh, Sorry, just bear with me. We'll look at the parameters and the ins and outs on the panel. Uh, firstly, so you can see it's divided into two sections where you have the top top section that's boxed in with uh, five jacks, which are outputs for various waveform shapes. You know, and you've got your standard culprits that you will find on most oscillators. So you have your side wave where I have a uh, cable coming from at the moment. Then we can see there's a triangle, uh, sawtooth, pulse wave, and then underneath that we have this variable waveform output, which is uh, sort of unique to the NTO. And we'll have a look at that and what makes that interesting but uh, just alongside that in the next section we have a series of inputs with these jacks as you can see so <coughs> these are also mostly pretty standard with oscillators uh, you have your volt per octave input for tracking pitch so you can uh, you know work with it in a musical way we have a sync input so we can uh, synchronize the NTO to you know, another oscillator or waveform. Uh, beside that we have an input for frequency modulation and this is exponential frequency modulation and below that there's these inputs here this black input is also frequency modulation, but this is for the linear input. So this is like one of the really nice things about this oscillator is it actually has inputs for both linear and exponential FM. And <coughs> it's dynamically controlled too. So you can see there's these two inputs. So one's for the uh, signal that you would use as a modulation source. And then below that, this VC is voltage control input. So it's voltage controllable, more or less. So that means it can be used dynamically. You can control the amount of FM with the voltage control input. And it's super useful for FM because it just adds a very musical kind of uh, functionality to the FM. And it's... Yeah, it's really useful for FM applications, creating 
um, nice kind of sound and yeah, just a lot of movement, you know. So alongside this, we have a portamento input. So this is under the voltage control, a volt per octave input. Sorry, I just lost my words there. And yeah, so we have this portamento input. So it also tracks volt per octave, but you can control the speed <coughs> of the portamento or the slew amount either with this uh, potentiometer at the bottom or with voltage control also there's an input for voltage control over the speed of the portamento so that's quite a nice addition and it's not very common on other oscillators so besides this little input here is our voltage control for the variable waveform so we'll come back to that but <clears throat> along the bottom these potentiometers or pots uh, from left to right we have the variable waveform shape and i'll come back to that in more detail but again we have the portamento control and then we have the linear fm amount and then besides that in the bottom right is the actual main frequency control for the oscillator just above is the fine tune so these two combine control the frequency the overall frequency and I've just got this cable plugged into the sign output so if I turn this up we can hear and we can see on the scope there there's this sign output which looks pretty typical of a sine wave it's nice and I wouldn't say it's exactly pure because you can see there's a bit of a, it's a bit of an odd bump almost along the top right hand side of the waveform but as far as sine waves go it's you know it's, as you can see it sort of bending out of shape as we get into the lower frequencies On the scope, so I'm just adjusting the main frequency control. That's one thing I will make mention of now that the actual waveform shapes with this oscillator are, are really not pure. So when you look at them and observe them on a scope, they don't actually resemble much of the actual shape that they're defined as so you can see that the sine wave is pretty close we'll have a look at the triangle we'll just take that out put that into the triangle and you can see again there's this funny sort of bump along the right hand side of each sort of peak and trough and I guess it probably becomes more prominent if we drop the frequency down you can see it again it just really loses its definition lower the lower range but it still resembles a triangle for most intents and purposes and it's those sort of imperfections that really give the, the oscillator the, its character you know so that's what I actually really enjoy about this oscillator in particular is the, just the quality of the sound and just the overall character of the oscillator you know it's got a very very vintage like analog quality to it and it's actually really well known widely established that it's uh, very very stable and tracks pitch over a lot of octaves you know it's got a very wide range of pitch tracking uh, and yeah there's a bit of a story I think it's Malcolm Cecil who is pretty legendary and as far as uh, synthesis go like he designed the Tonto 
modular system, which was a monstrous uh, modular synth that he built back in the 70s, I believe. And his was based largely on Moog oscillators at first, and he was having trouble with tracking, apparently, and then decidedly replaced the Moog oscillators with the surge oscillators because of the uh, temperature compensation that they had and the design it's just a really really well designed oscillator and it's yeah like I was saying it tracks and holds its uh, pitch uh, stability you know like it's very stable so yeah, he replaced the Moog oscillators with the Surge NTOs, as far as I understand, and I don't know if he actually replaced them or just added to the system or not, because it's a huge system, but yeah, that's just a little bit of history, and then you find the quality of the sound is very kind of analogue as well, like They've just got a very vintage kind of rawness to them. So let's have a look at the sawtooth if we put this in. So now you can see that doesn't really resemble a sawtooth at all. Uh, maybe if we can adjust frequency, it may shift. So you start to see more of a rising slope. left to right but it's certainly not what you would see with a pure sawtooth signal but still very harmonically rich so let's have a look at the pulse which is the top left and again this is Nothing like what you would expect with a pulse. It's uh, almost triangular in appearance on the scope. If we take the frequency down, it just really looks very skewed. In the high frequency range, it looks more like a triangle sign. So around the mid range it somewhat resembles some square. And now let's have a look at this variable waveform. So this is a quite an interesting output. So we have this bottom control and it's in the center of the pot at 12 o'clock you're basically left with this like a, a sine output you have more or less a sine with very little harmonic content so if we go anti-clockwise to the left the waveform morphs into what you would typically expect of sawtooth qualities of sawtooth and then if we go to the right clockwise from 12 noon we get into pulse pulse waves and pulse width modulation type sounds and then square waves which don't look square so you can hear that, if we shift that around, you can hear that typical pulse width modulated sort of sound. So that's how you would approach doing pulse width modulation with this oscillator, is to use the variable output and then set a modulation uh, to you sort of modulate with that range. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to take 
some signals to show you some of the modulation capabilities and I'm just going to take an output from my DUSG or slope generator which we'll look at in another video but this is just going to be a rising and falling modulation source and I'm just going to show you modulation of the variable waveform so this will be into the pulse range so as I was explaining you can get pulse width modulation If we bring this shape parameter back around to the opposite side, we're back into the sawtooth kind of range. So you can see that increasing the morphing to the sawtooth side. And if you bring that into the audio range, if we liked for some interesting Tambral effects. of sounds there to explore. Uh, let's have a look at the portamento controls. So if we if we take a, a sequence of some sort uh, let's just I'm just gonna set up a bit of a sequence from my Turing machine. So and we're going to take the voltage from that through a quantizer and then bear with me, I've got cables everywhere here yeah so this is from the Turing machine through a quantizer that's quantized to a a minor scale or something close to a minor scale and I'm gonna just patch that Oops, wrong cable. back to our well firstly we've got our volt per octave input and we'll try and make a bit more of an interesting sequence sequence now properly so that's just going into the volt per octave input if we took that out and put it straight into the portamento input we can increase the amount of time it takes to slide from note to note and it's not it's not really what doesn't get extreme, it's just kind of, you know, a bit of a, a quick slide when it's even at max setting, but it's enough to give it a nice sort of character and 
It's pretty useful. And you can control that time amount with voltage as well, which I won't get into, but it's nice to have that control. So let's have a look at this FM. We've got linear FM, as I was saying before. I'll take that output from my DRSG again. Actually, no, I won't. I'll take it from another oscillator. I'll we'll take the side, put, the side output from the second NTO that I have into the linear input. So we can get linear FM now if we increase this amount. Compare that with the exponential input. Interesting sort of territory to explore with FM. It's got a the sine waves is probably more interesting. It's not so noisy. Let's go back again. So this is linear FM with sine waves. Fundamentals a little bit more intact, so it's not quite what you'd expect by like linear FM, say in a digital synth, which is what you would kind of expect with something like the typical Yamaha phase modulation type FM. But you compare it to the exponential, it's really not as extreme, and the pitch shift isn't so prominent. Awesome for getting really interesting percussive sounds and so on. And then finally, I'm just going to show you the sync input. So I'm going to sync this oscillator that we're hearing to the second NTO. We'll take the pulse output. I'm not sure if the pulse output actually works with the sync. It's, it's a bit temperamental, like the sync input will only sort of it tends to work with certain signals and not others for reasons that are unbeknownst to me I mean I've looked into it and I can't remember exactly what I'd found but let's have a look yeah so the pulse wave doesn't sync which I sort of suspected that was the case but I thought I would try it so we'll go from the sawtooth of my second NTO into the sync input and now you can hear the sync coming in and it's not quite a hard sync it's more of a soft sync so it won't track the pitch exactly but you'll get qualities where you'll get sync qualities you know where there's extra harmonics added but it will still kind of retain its own frequency or fundamental as well as you can hear. And if we take, oh, we'll just shape that because we're coming from the variable output. So you 
music. There's some pretty interesting synth types of behaviour there. And they're combining it with the FM as well. It's quite interesting. So let's have a look. Um, take the stereo street out, put it in. Just be careful or be wary that it's pretty extreme and you don't need huge depths with the FM if you're sinking. Let's try the linear input. Yeah, it's quite extreme. This uh, sequence to our synced oscillator, our syncing oscillator. I'm just tweaking the speed of this modulation source. It's Give me a Selenia FM. So here there's all kinds of wackiness and weird. crazy and pretty interesting so there's a lot to explore there and yeah it's an awesome oscillator I still love them I've had them for a few years and it's easy to see why they're so revered uh, so I'm gonna leave it with that I hope this has been sort of informative and helpful if you've got comments questions and queries or anything like that so feel free to drop a line and I'll definitely get back to you and uh, I'll uh, catch you in another video soon. Cheers for watching.